All right. The board met tonight in executive session. We're now ready to begin the public portion of the meeting. Uh, we have some public correspondence. Uh, and I, since our last meeting, which was uh, June 14th, and I will read that off. Uh, we heard from uh, Elizabeth Ellersick on the fifth grade curriculum and sync situation, which is an administrative issue that was resolved by our administrator, by the appropriate administrator. Uh, we received uh, several emails from Ms. Pamela Call uh, with commentary on the COVID vac vaccination and masking requirements. Those were, um, they were not really questions, but they, the, that communication was acknowledged. We received uh, communication from uh, Felice Bettenbender on behalf of the AAPI parents group uh, about a curriculum presentation at 8 p.m. on the 4th of August on inclusion of um, AAPI elements into curriculum uh, it will be featuring Senator Vin Gopal, who is a sponsor of legislation pending in the legislature on AAPI curriculum. Uh, we received an email from the GRB DIA, the Glen Ridge um, Black Diversity Inclusion Association, um, with questions on the procedures for hiring the middle school assistant principal. Uh, that was acknowledged, and um, Mr. Phillips described the process, the hiring process, the interview process, the use of focus groups of various um, stakeholders uh, in that process. And then we also had an email from Amanda McCabe, who is in favor of, of the um, mandatory, uh, of a mass, mandatory mask requirement for the coming school year. So that is our um, communication for this week. Uh, the president's report, I will just go over a few things that have happened uh, either legislatively or in general since our last meeting. Um, the, the budget was signed. On June 30th, the governor signed the budget. Um, so, or I'm sorry, on, uh, yes, the governor signed the budget on June 29th. So the state uh, now has a budget. We also have an adjourned legislature, which may not go back into session until after the election in November. Uh, he also um, signed a bill uh, that requires boards of ed to provide additional or compensatory special education and related services, including transition services to students with disabilities following a determination by a student's individualized education program team that the student requires such services. That applies to students who would have aged out of um, special education services during the 2020 one school year, 21, 22, or 22, 23. Uh, also, there, uh, the governor signed a bill permitting parents or guardians to request, in accordance with specific procedures, uh, grade retention for students during the 20, 21, 22 school year. Parents have always had the ability to come in and request grade retention. This just sets forth a different procedure and gives parents a little bit more. Um, uh, in the process. Uh, on Friday, July 9th, the CDC um, issued guidance urging schools to reopen for in-person learning in the fall, even if the schools cannot take all the steps the CDC recommends to curb the spread of coronavirus. Um, given that the COVID variant seems to be rampant, um, many people feel that CDC will issue further guidance shortly. And then also, lastly, uh, the governor signed something called Laura Wooten's Law, Laura Wooten's Law, which you can't say three times quickly, Laura Wooten's Law, uh, that requires civic instruction in middle school and authorizes the New Jersey Center for Civic Education to provide the curricula, professional development, and technical assistance for that. Their uh, civics education is already in the um, New Jersey Student Learning Standards, but this uh, sort of formalizes some of that. And um, I also, before I forget, want to um, remember a very good, uh, very public spirited pa Glenridge parent who died recently, uh, Jeff Gill. Some of you may have known him. He was a longtime soccer coach. His wife, Patty, was involved with the home and school. 
uh, particularly at Forest Avenue, but also later. Uh, Jeff uh, just died, I think, last week. And so our thoughts and prayers go out to the Gill family on the loss of Jeff. And that is the president's report, uh, superintendent's report. Mute yourself. Thank you, Betsy. Uh, I'm going to start off my report by handing out uh, some framed certificates. Every year when um, the winners of the board elections are announced, the county provides uh, framed certificates. And this is our first time that we're meeting live, so I can actually distribute them. So um, congratulations to the last winners in the November elections, uh, Jocelyn. Tracy, uh, I think we have all of them in the same location, and Duval. Terrific. <laughs> they should combine and buy some lottery tickets over there. I'm going to share my screen uh, to provide my presentation tonight. So uh, in the summer, we have a lot going on. Um, although we don't have students, we, we remain very busy as we prepare for the fall. Um, some of the things that I, I'd like to talk about are our academics. Um, we, for the first time, ran a summer boost program. We had our first session uh, and it ended last week. It was a two week se session and went very well. We have roughly about 70 students involved and we do start a, a second session of our summer boost program on August 2nd and roughly 120 students will be involved in that program. Uh, I really want to thank uh, the, the teachers who are, who are teaching the program, uh, the administrators who have helped out the program and Erica Shireen, especially uh, she is the lead teacher and she's really overseeing what's happening. So I, um, she's done an amazing job stepping up. Uh, we have some curriculum that is being written this summer and um, as we prepare for the reopening in September. And we're looking at our equity audit. Uh, last week, Winnie and I were able to meet with uh, the director of Olive Branch. She gave a brief uh, summary of uh, uh, equity audit report and then provided us a copy. So we will be going through that copy thoroughly with the administrators. I shared a copy with um, the board of ed members and we, um, the director asked us to schedule another meeting when we've had a, a sufficient time to go over it so she can answer any questions that uh, pertaining to the equity audit. And then she will be coming in uh, during one of the uh, September Board of Ed meetings to present her findings to the public. So um, we will make sure everyone's aware when that happens. Uh, summer is also a busy time when it comes to personnel. Uh, we are busy hiring uh, teachers uh, throughout the process. Uh, we do have a, uh, several open positions still, and that is a result of having a, a handful of uh, leaves uh, that have occurred towards the end of last year, uh, last school year. Also, we had a couple of resignations of, of teachers who are moving on to other districts and we wanna wish them the best. Uh, this summer, we are upgrading our district website. So we are doing the best clean out possible of our old website, making sure all the material that's currently on there that is current, up to date and, and um, of value, and then we're make that transfer to the next um, to the new upgraded uh, web page. And we know we're going to expect a little bumps and bruises as that transfer happens, but uh, that we have every uh, as much faith as possible in the in the tech department to make sure that is as smooth as it can be. Um, and we're working on reopening plans. And um, as as we're talking about reopenings. Um, We've heard from um, the, the governor on a couple occasions, um, and we know that he has eliminated the remote only option for parents. He has stated that um, this, uh, at that time that the sta uh, state is not going to mandate masks. That it's gonna be a local district option. Um, he's made some comments uh, um, recently that if situations uh, got to a point that the, st the, the uh, state had to step in that they would as far as uh, mandating mask. Um, 
We've heard from the CDC, which has recommended that uh, unvaccinated students wear masks, that vaccinated students are, it's not needed at this point. And we've heard from um, the American Academy of Pediatricians who are stated that masks should be worn by all students uh, come to September. Uh, we typically will follow the directives of the New Jersey Department of Health. We are waiting for them to have guide, uh, uh, release their guidelines. They have not updated those so far. Uh, the Department of Education did put out uh, a publication called The Road Forward, which outlined uh, a lot of um, protocols that we already had in place. Um, uh, there wasn't significant changes and, and it offered a lot of flexibility for districts um, just make sure that they're offering in-person instruction next uh, uh, this coming fall. So we're, we're paying attention to, to what's happening in the next couple of weeks, at least from the state and the Department of Health. And I'll be consulting with other uh, local superintendents, um, our local health director and our school physician. Uh, and hopefully we'll have some guidance by that time that we can shortly put out reopening plans and get them to the parents. Uh, we do expect things to, uh, you know, as far as um, being in person and being full days, that's fully expected, but some of the protocols will be adjusted as we go into the fall. Facility-wise, uh, always a, a, an important time for us to take care of our buildings. Uh, for those who are alive, uh, you can probably see some of the cleaning that's going on in the high school and, and maintenance projects that are happening throughout the district. Some projects that you um, that are um, consuming a lot of our time. Uh, we do have a lot of primary classroom changes, and uh, that's a result of uh, the, the pre-K classrooms going back to Forest and Linden, and we have some um, first grade classrooms going to Central. So there's a lot of movement of supplies and getting those rooms ready. Uh, anytime we have an opportunity to spruce up a room, whether it's um, uh, patching some holes that might be in the walls from pinpointing uh, all the poster boards or um, just painting it, we take that opportunity when those rooms are emptied uh, uh, to get them ready for the, the new person taking over the room. Central School is still working on a gutter replacement. Um, it's, um, it's probably about 80% finished at this time. Linden Avenue School, uh, they are doing some repairs to the playground wall, but they're gonna be repainting that wall. I know everyone who used to seeing Dr. Caravello's uh, character on there, it will be removed. Um, so get down there and take a picture before it's painted over. Uh, Ridgewood Avenue School, we're working on some partial roof replacements and, and that has happened roughly for about a year now. We've been uh, replacing sections of, of the roof that much that was needed uh, repairs. In the Glenridge High School, uh, we're looking to um, make some adjustments in the media center, and we're also um, uh, sprucing up some instructional space uh, in various classrooms. On tonight's agenda is uh, a proposed calendar for the 2022-23 school year, um, and th there are some changes in, in the calendar the, than what we've had in place the last uh, two years. Um, we've started before Labor Day last uh, school year in this current school year because Labor Day is, has been uh, occurring late uh, and, it, and it was difficult to complete our schedule um, with that late uh, starting time. So we've, uh, we've gone, the students have reported to school September 1st, but in the proposed calendar for 22-23, they will be coming, the first day for students will be after Labor Day. Um, we're still trying to keep the students um, uh, uh, to minimize the, the, their days in June, because we realize June, um, the days are not as productive uh, um, as days throughout the year. So one of, um, uh, in order to do so, uh, we've had to shorten one of the February break days. So that's the Tuesday following President's Day. Students will still have a half day on that Thursday and be off um, that Friday and Monday. Uh, I, I'm hoping this is only a one year adjustment um, based on the way the, the calendar fell this year uh, for this for the 22 23 school year and our April break we've been going the second full week in April, um, but uh, under this cal calendar year we'd be going the first full week in April. So um, again, we have the last day scheduled for June 16th in this calendar and something that we've been trying to do the last few years is. is keeping, um, is not go into that third full week in June, 
um, just because we want to use more productive, what, what I call more productive school days when uh, outside of June. Uh, also on today's uh, agenda is um, the approval of the 1.274, 1, 1, um, and um, and $117 American Rescue Plan grant. And um, this was a, a topic that we've heard about in late spring. We had a lot of parents and, and um, individuals speak about um, possible allocations. Uh, the administrative team have met several times. The finance committee of the board have met to discuss. Um, and there was a, a, a school community uh, committee formed so we could discuss possible allocations. When we started focusing on the American Rescue Plan grant, we really wanted to focus on what we could bring in for the students. So you're gonna find the majority of this funding is focused on academics and um, social emotional learning. Um, what we're proposing is that uh, at the elementary level that we have two academic support teachers uh, and we would split them between the four buildings um, where they would go in and provide support, mathematics and, and language arts. It could be in the classroom, it could be full out, it could be small group. Um, but just, uh, uh, and they'd be rotating between the different grade levels uh, just to offer student, the, uh, students more support and the teachers as they're doing uh, group activities uh, in those content areas. Uh, we're also looking to bring in uh, professional development for language arts with the elementary teachers and, and um, just uh, further develop their skills in the class, their instructional skills in the classroom. Uh, we're looking to bring in an interventionalist, or you could call them a support teacher at the middle school and high school, and this would also focus on language arts. We realize the importance uh, of, of language arts, and that's why you're seeing so much attention as far as allocations. Um, and then some of the social emotional learning uh, um, components, we're looking to bring in a part -time, three part-time counselors, uh, one for the primary schools, one for the Ridge, uh, Ridgewood Avenue School, and one for the high school to run. Um, SEL programs, but also to offer um, more counseling, whether it, again, it's individual counseling or group counseling at, at, at those buildings. Um, part of the American Rescue Plan grant is um, the, the possibility of um, reinstituting positions that had to be cut because of budget constraints. Um, and we heard a lot from uh, the public about the media specialists. We did put in a part-time media, media specialist and the plan would be that part-time media specialist would go back and forth between Forest uh, Avenue School and Linden Avenue School. And the full-time person would work um, at the high school and uh, central school. The majority of their time would be at the high school. Currently there will be five classes at central school that would receive library. So they teach those five periods and uh, have several periods to uh, work the library, make sure it's set up uh, for those, um, for those uh, individuals at Central School. Uh, we're also looking to uh, bring in uh, social emotional learning programs where the administration is um, reviewing several uh, programs. We wanted to make sure that we have something consistent that our students are getting across the grade levels. The teachers are all getting trained on and um, the students are hearing a common language as they're moving from building to building. So that was important to us. Uh, within um, the SEL program also is the ability for us to bring in programs, um, as assemblies and enrichment programs that would be helpful. Uh, we're looking to expand our summer program uh, based on the success we had this year. So we're gonna need some funding to do that. Uh, after school homework club, uh, which is, um, it's another opportunity for students who are struggling uh, to get a uh, chance to work with teachers in, in an individualized manner. And we have some technology uh, upgrades that we weren't able to purchase um, last school year because of um, our expenses related to PPE. Uh, and that's technology access points at Ridgewood Avenue School. They're um, becoming outdated and that's why some of our Wi-Fi uh, um, at Ridgewood Avenue is not as strong as we would like it. And we, when we went to the hybrid model and we had that combination of in-person and remote going on throughout every classroom uh, during the hybrid model, we, we noticed uh, some uh, pro uh, it, more extensive problems with uh, connection. So we're hoping to take care of that. 
And also we realize the importance of uh, using our interactive uh, whiteboards and uh, as they're starting to age out, we, they need to, some of them need to be replaced. And um, the last is funding um, some improvements facility-wise uh, here at the high school as we're looking to do some media center upgrades that, that um, Mr. Lawler has spoken to uh, with the home and school and, and um, he's developing a complete plan based on funding. Uh, my next topic is the pandemic update uh, and our numbers that we've experienced uh, towards the end, uh, late spring and into the summer has have been terrific, uh, but we are seeing a, a slight increase and that's something that we should be aware of. Uh, if you look at the numbers from June 19th to July 17th, you see that those numbers are constantly uh, increased um, in, in all three categories that, and those are the three categories that uh, make up the Cali report. Uh, but when you compare to those numbers to where we were in February, uh, it, it's a fourth of, 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 what, of what they used to be. Um, so we're aware of that, uh, we're monitoring it. And um, as we're working with um, the state and, and our local health department and getting their recommendations, um, they're sharing this information with us also. And as we look with locally, uh, the town seems to uh, be doing very well. Um, in about a, a two month period, they've only seen 11 new cases. And those are uh, things that we consider when we're looking to make protocols for the school, what is happening locally? Uh, one of the things we're gonna try looking at is what, what is the vaccination rate in town? Um, and for those students 12 and older, uh, we're, we're gonna hopefully uh, get a better idea of how many of our, those of our students are vaccinated, who, who can be vaccinated. And that will all configure into um, the development of protocols for our reopening. Um, as I mentioned, the, the Road Forward um, is a program that by the New Jersey Department of Ed um, ad addressing where we, uh, where we should be moving towards September. And really the thrust of that report was about being in person. Um, the CDC uh, guidelines came out, uh, I believe on July 9th. Um, and those guidelines uh, said that students who, who are unvaccinated should be wearing masks, unvaccinated students, um, they do not have to be wearing masks. And I think you have to be careful when you're in buildings that have um, combined age levels where um, some of those students are old enough to be vaccinated, but others aren't. And um, after the CDC released their guidelines, the American Academy of Pediatricians recommended that all students come back in September wearing masks. So we're, we're getting a lot of information. And one of the things that we, we were wary of because we experienced last year was coming out early with a plan and then having all these recommendations change as the weeks uh, passed during the summer. And we saw that. Um, we are still waiting for the New Jersey Department of Health to release their recommendations. And um, that's gonna play a big part in us developing our plans for September. And that is my update. Thank you, Dirk. Uh, board members, do you have any questions uh, for Dirk before we move on? David? I do. Um, Dirk, do you want to mute your, unless you're about to talk? Um, Dirk, you know, you referenced the um, high school media specialist position and the comments we've received over the past few meetings, and then you went through the slide. If you go back to the ARP slide and just sort of clarify what what's happening with the media specialist position and how it relates to the allocation of ARP funds. It's five. Sorry about that. All right, going back to the slide, hopefully. Uh, as far as the allocations, so um, when we started looking at the media specialists, so we had a tough decision when we went through the budget process. In, or, in order to make the budget, we had to make 
uh, some tough financial decisions and and um, some large funds that we needed to um, unfortunately cut. And typically, when you're looking at schools, if you're looking to cut uh, a significant amount of money, it relates goes back to personnel. Um, personnel typically with um, salaries and benefits will make up to 80 to 85 percent of a school's budget. Uh, in our case, uh, we cut several positions, uh, some of them part-time, some of the um, positions we made full-time to part-time, but we did look at the high school media specialists and decided um, uh, it was a cut that we could survive, uh, to, for lack of a better term, um, based on what we were seeing in the schools. Um, so we de uh, decided to make that cut, um, and that was prior to knowing that we would get any funding at the federal level as it related to the American Rescue Plan. So we, um, as once we were found out that there could be additional funding um, uh, based on uh, our grant from uh, ARP, uh, that was a possibility. And, and we looked at that and um, we considered doing the full, uh, full time media specialist. But when you looked at a full time media specialist, um, it would then prevent us from doing other um, components uh, that, that we put into this plan. Um, uh, we looked at the possibility of a part-time media specialist and could we cover what we're doing in, in our district currently with a part-time media specialist. And what would happen in this case is, um, as I mentioned, that part-time media specialist would be assigned to two of the lower elementary schools. Uh, the full-time media specialist would be spend some time at Central, um, but the, the vast majority of their time at the high school, they'd be relieved of some of their assigned teaching duties in order to, um, teach a, the uh, central at central school, but as far as um, their expectations of teaching the research, research middle school cycles would still happen, um, overseeing the library, working with the students and teachers when it comes to uh, research projects, those things could still occur at the high school. Sorry, so are, are you, are you rehiring the <laughs> The media specialist at the high school and if so where where does that line item appear here on the arp slide um the the individual at the high uh high school current media specialist was was never let go she was always going to be the uh full-time person and that was based on uh, seniority um it was the, the primary um school librarian that was let go so based on seniority laws and tenure laws, we would have to go back to that individual and ask her if they would want to take, um, we would have to offer the part-time media specialist at the primary level. So by reinstating this line here, PT media specialist, it enables the individual to return to the high school. The PT, uh, uh, yes. Yes, yes. yes. It, it, it does, does enable to go to the, to the high school where in our original budget, she was just leaving the high school to be the library, uh, media specialist at uh, the primary school. Okay. Board members, any other questions before we go to public comment? I have one uh, Heather? Um, yeah. Sorry. When do we expect this to be approved by the state? Like this is a proposal, right? This is a proposal. Um, grants are due until November. Uh, I do not have any idea when they will approve it. We're looking to, if tonight's, um, if the board approves the grant tonight, um, we will submit it this week and, and it, it's up to the state. I'm not really sure what to expect from them to be quite honest with you. Okay. All right. Have they said anything like if it's a rolling admission and approval, we have no nothing? No, there's there's been nothing said about that uh, rolling versus uh, all approved at once. One would hope it's rolling, but they really haven't said. Any other uh, board questions? Sure, Duval. Yes, it's also about the ARP grants um, proposal. I wanted to know why um, the focus seems to be on supplementing language arts as opposed to some other subjects, and if you all had any sort of un, um, data to show that language arts needed more assistance 
or support than other um, other areas, like math, for example. Mm -hmm. So, so traditionally, if you look at our, our, math, our math and language arts scores, our language arts scores are always lower than our math, whether it's ES, um, SATs, whether it's um, in New Jersey student learning uh, assessments. Um, so, so and, and then when you look at our intervention programs, um, the language arts has always been a, a, a more uh, have more students involved in intervention programs through our reading specialists, uh, through our Title I programs. So we realize, especially at, at the elementary level, that um, the, the language arts is a, a greater concern when it comes to um, students being at grade level or falling behind or, or needing intervention. Any other uh, board questions? Okay. We have come to the first public comment period for comments on agenda items only. I'm sorry, we've come to the first public comment period for comments or questions on agenda items only. Uh, this is the first time we have done public comment, both virtually and uh, in person. So it may be, um, this may be a little bit of an adventure. Uh, what I can tell you is if you are in person and you want to make a public comment, please come up to the podium, uh, identify yourself and confirm your Glenridge residency. If you are affiliated with a professional organization, um, let us know that as well. Um, then you have two minutes uh, to uh, state your questions or comments. My colleague David Campbell will be keeping time since um, operating this three ring circus and keeping time at the same time is beyond my capabilities. So that is for the in person people. For the people who are virtual, if you have a question or comment, please use the raise your hand function, which is on the bottom of your um, screen by participants. Uh, you raise your hand, we will recognize you uh, in turn. And then the same rules apply. You state your name, your residency, your affiliation if you have one, and then you have uh, two minutes to share your thoughts with us. So let's start uh, with the in-person people because I think that there are um, possibly uh, fewer of them. Does anyone have a question or comment who is in person? Okay. Um, All right, um, all right, let's go to the, I'm just losing my Zoom here. Wait a minute. Yeah, thank you. There we go. And I'm looking, I see a hand, I'll just look at your screen. Um, Nihal Buji. Hi, everyone. Um, just a quick question with um, the several half days that the high school experienced uh, this spring because of the hot weather. I'm wondering what's what's the long term plan to avoid uh, a situation like that in subsequent school years. You have to repeat it for the people. Um, the questioner wanted to know with the hot weather. Uh, do we have a plan for the high school, which, of course, is the one of our schools that is not air conditioned. Uh, for subsequent hot weather. So, uh, so, so tr traditionally we haven't taken half days when there's been warm weathers. We've, um, the students have stayed for full days. Uh, uh, this occurred this past year because the students were required to wear masks. So the combination of the weather and the mask uh, required us to use the half day options at the high school. Uh, I know we're looking at possibilities of trying to air condition um, some more spaces at the high school. So when we do have those extremely warm weather days that we can have uh, classes circulate to some cooling areas and they, the students have a break. Um, but as, as far as a long term plan, um, I, I will let the public know when we went through our bond referendum. Uh, 
uh, several years ago that allowed us to replace HVACs at the elementary schools and uh, bathroom um, upgrades and uh, the purchase of, of central. We did price out um, air conditioning the high school and at that time it was four, uh, a little over $4 million. And it was um, based on the bond referendum that we were putting forth at the time. We did not think that was um, essential or something that we could, uh, the town would necessarily support. So we did not include it in our bond referendum. Okay, I see Lauren Johnson. Hi, Lauren Johnson. I have two kids in the high school. I live in Glenridge. Um, I know it's undecided as to whether students will be required to wear masks coming back in the fall, but I was wondering if there's any data available or if it's all that could be done to see what percentage of eligible students, staff, teachers have been vaccinated and if that could be helpful in determining whether masks would be required or recommended coming back in the fall. Yeah, so uh, I, I am going to reach out to the county to find out what information they can share with me, but I will also be parent, uh, putting out a survey to parents who have uh, students age 12 or above so I, I, we can get a better idea of basically what percentage of our students are vaccinated. Um, th those are informations that would be helpful, obviously, in us making the determination, um, but it's also us uh, continuing to monitor the, the um, positive uh, COVID numbers within the the town, which has been uh, extremely low, so um, that's a reassuring sign as far uh, as far as I'm concerned, and will help us make some of the the, the decisions related to a reopening. All right. Um, I don't. I see. Uh, HP. HP. Yes. Hi, it's Harris. Do you hear me? Yeah. I was wondering with um, the. Um, reopening plan and the new uh, guidelines you said about the IEP is if we're able to increase the time that child study team members and case managers have to work on during the summer, because this came up last year and again this year, they're limited to one hour. And once they use that up, we're told we can't have any meetings or talk to anybody until the school year starts. So I know it was in the last board, you approved the one hour per case manager, but it's just not enough for some people and wondering how we can get some more time with our case managers during the summer. Thanks. I believe the approval for one hour was for an IEP meeting, and um, I know the case managers do multiple um, IEP meetings during the summer, and some of them uh, last beyond the uh, the hour. Um, so I think we've been flexible in making sure that um, our CST members are available, but at the same time, that is the summer, and, and a lot of them do make plans with their families. So. Um, they're not available at all times. Uh, we're, we're working around their schedule uh, during the summer months. Might have been on mute, so say her name. Yeah. Bernice? Oh. Sorry. Yes. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, hi, this is Bernice Clark Bonnet, um, Glen Ridge resident, um, two children in the high school. Um, I thank you for sharing the information, Mr. Phillips, about um the various ways that you're trying to to, to use the dollars um, across needs uh, in our town. Can you explain a little bit more about the language arts interventionist um, and also for the after school homework club? Is that teacher taught or is that, I understand that sometimes that's, that has also been um, taught by um, students. So just wanted to get a little bit more information about that. Thank you. No problem. Um, the homework club, that we, we offer different versions of that at the high school. There is a homework club that's ran by uh, uh, students and a teacher who advises them. 
Uh, I believe it's at the middle school level. We have peer tutoring that's usually organized by the National Honor Society uh, um, students. Um, but what was what is proposed in, in the ARP grant is for teachers um, to work a homework club after school. Um, but uh, please remember that also, at least at the high school, the teachers are assigned till 315 to be in their buildings and be working with the students. So uh, if a student ever needs extra help, they should be able to find the teachers um, in their classroom to provide assistance unless uh, there's a department or, or faculty meeting that day. Um, and the other part of the question was, I'm sorry. Um, oh, the LA intervention. So uh, we're looking for someone to come in and uh, when students are identified as um, needing extra help um, uh, in the language arts, we could be able to provide uh, a teacher to provide that assistance. And again, that could be happen individually or within a small group. Uh, at the start of the school year, uh, New Jersey is administering a, a new test, a standardized test called Start Strong. Uh, we're supposed to get, um, it's supposed to be administered from, by the, uh, from the end of September to the beginning of October. The results, the individual results are supposed to be immediate. So we're going to get some data feedback through that. We're going to get some data feedback through uh, the teachers doing their student growth outcomes assessments. Uh, and we'll look at um, results from last school year uh, to, to help us identify students who might need more assistance in, in language arts. And, and that's where we'd like to um, utilize those individ uh, that, that individual. And again, uh, hopefully the grant funds will be approved early so we can get um, uh, those individuals on board and in district as soon as possible. I don't see any other hands. Uh, bear in mind that we have a second public um, period at the end of the meeting. Betsy, can I ask just a follow on question? Sure. Would the interventionists be um, assigned to potentially any student? Is it um, for IEP students or, you know, uh, 50, um, 504 yeah. students or, just wanted to know what the, the envisioned scope is for those, those instructors. Uh, it could be assigned to any student. Um, typically with um, students with IEPs, um, within their IEPs, they have a lot of accommodation modifications already and hopefully they're working. Um, if not, that's something they should probably be discussing with their child uh, study team case manager. Um, so we're really looking to hit the, the general education population, um, those students who uh, may not have um, achieved as much on, under the, the hybrid models of instruction last year and, and, and the previous, the previous year, year being all remote. All right, uh, we have a committee and liaison reports, which as you recall, we deferred from our last meeting. Uh, let's just go right down the row and I realize some of you have not had any meetings since our last meeting so um, but let's let's go with what we have so Duval. Thank you Betsy we have not had a communications meeting um, we know already that the website is being worked on so that's uh, in 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 good hands and um, I don't have much more to report than that at the moment. Thank you. Sorry, Jocelyn. There hasn't been a grace meeting since my last update. There were the final Forest and Ridgewood Avenue School HSA meetings, and they were both in person, which was a novelty for everyone, um, and hopefully a sign of more to come. Um, we signed in the new executive teams for each of these HSAs and there was a talk at Forest of having summer play dates. So I think communications will have gone out about that um, and some requests for additional involvement in various chairs. Um, and at Ridgewood, there was talk about the new courtyard and, and was sort of a revealing of that space, um, which is, is really exciting and a discussion of 
some of how that space will be used in the future. Um, and I think that sort of covers it. Thanks. Tracy. Uh, yes, the personnel committee met on June 25th to discuss um, some policies that needed updating and um, to discuss some open positions. Um, yeah, Educational Foundation has not met recently, but um, I, I know that they've gotten some um, some items on their agenda that they're they're looking to uh, to um, meet and discuss funding for, and that's it. Thanks, David. Yep, the Finance Committee, Finance and uh, Facilities Committee met on June sixteenth. <clears throat> Obviously, we discussed the uh, ARP. Um, grant application and the details of uh, the expenditures. Um, we discussed the details of some um, construction initiatives uh, related to facilities um, and to the year balances uh, and the like. Thank you. Uh, Anthony. There were um, <clears throat> no GRAA meetings. You probably all noticed the um, outreach for tryouts for various teams. And there was a curriculum meeting, but I don't have notes on that. Okay, so Heather has notes on that. I don't have those notes here, unfortunately. So that's it for me. Okay, uh, Teresa. Hi, everyone. So um, I didn't report last time on the Glenridge, uh, the Patrons for the Arts program. There were scholarships uh, awarded to three students, Janelle Austin, Lily Malone, and Andrea Schnack. So I think congratulations to them for their wonderful work. Um, and the Gasland players are right now in the midst of uh, their summer program. They have rehearsals for the teen program in August, Into the Woods. And their junior camp just ended, which is terrific that they can continue with the programs. Um, the team program for the summer is going to be held on the 18th to the 21st of August. And the uh, Gasland players want to send out a big thank you to Freeman Gardens for allowing them the opportunity to have a terrific spring awakening teen show in May and a Lion King uh, program uh, at Carteret, that, that, that was another uh, town uh, donation of, of facilities so they could continue the program. They're looking forward to being back at RIS, welcoming more um, folks to participate in, the, uh, in these great drama programs. Thank you. Heather. Sure. The curriculum committee met at the end of June. We heard about how diversity was being added to the related arts curriculum. We heard a little bit about um, the STEAM program at Ridgewood and how it was being focusing on programming and MakerBox. Uh, we heard a little bit about uh, tech selection guidelines for picking um, reading materials and who was involved with proposing those guidelines. And we talked a bit about uh, the media center at the high school as well. Thank you. And I almost forgot um, the high school home and school met uh, in person outdoors for the last meeting of the year and um, talked mostly about end of the year events, including the first ever eighth grade carnival, which some of you who've had eighth graders in the past remember the eighth grade dance. The carnival was the new eighth grade dance, which uh, was scheduled to be outside, but had to be moved inside because there were thunderstorms that day. Uh, there are new high school officers um, and that was celebrated. Uh, most of the events that were described at the end of the school meeting have taken place. Of course, graduation was successful. Project graduation, I believe, was successful. Uh, and uh, the um, report from Rob Hill, the athletic director, which came um, by way of uh, John Waller, was that uh, was about various uh, athletic events and activities and how they have uh, succeeded despite the restrictions um, placed upon them by COVID. So that is the high school report in, in a very small nutshell. The negotiations committee has been negotiating with the uh, administrators. Uh, those negotiations are progressing well. Um, they are ongoing. 
we hope that we'll be able to bring them to a satisfactory conclusion very shortly. And those are the committee and liaison reports. Board members uh, will now continue with the routine portions of the meeting. You have in your packets uh, minutes from exec session from June 14th and regular session from that same day. Does anyone have any changes, corrections, et cetera, to the minutes? No? All right. David, would you move the minutes? I move M1. May I have a second? Second. Second. Second from uh, from Jocelyn. Okay. Um, any just dis further discussion? Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet. Aye. Ms. Boyle Volucci. Aye. Mr. Campbell. Aye. Ms. Gottlieb. Aye. Ms. Graham. Aye. Ms. St. Auburn. Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos. Aye. Ms. Ginsburg. Aye. The motion carries. Uh, we have several administrative items, including first reading of several new or revised policies, which have been reviewed uh, in advance by the personnel committee. Uh, in keeping with our practice, you always have two readings of policies. So we will have another reading of these same policies at our next meeting. Um, David, would you move administrative? I move A1 through A3. I'll second. Thank you, Jocelyn. Any questions on the administrative items? No? Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyle Volucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Uh, yes, I move P1 through P19, which includes um, items on the addendum for P3, P9, and P16. Second. Thank you. Uh, in keeping with our rules, personnel items are discussed in exec session. So if there are no objections, Barbara, we can call the roll. Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyle Bellucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Betsy, I just want to recognize uh, Kimberly O'Donnell Pickard is in the audience. She is the new assistant principal for the middle school at the high school. So congratulations. Ms. Pickert, welcome. Okay, let us go on with the business item. Uh, before we do, I want to uh, give thanks, uh, draw your attention to item B7, which is donations. Uh, we've had several generous donations, including a monetary donation of $3,500 from the uh, Glenridge Field Hockey Booster Club for field hockey uniform, and also a very generous donation um, from the Glenridge Educational Foundation, an emergent grant of $9,300, and an Orton Gillingham grant of $2,800, uh, 20, approximately $2,800. Um, Tracy, did you want to say anything more about the Ed foundation grant? Uh, no, I, you know, we haven't had a meeting recently and I know, um, that, uh, Fran Wong and, and the rest of the uh, educational foundation has uh, a, a lot of things on their plate at the moment that they're tossing about to, uh, to help us with in the fall. So as always, they've been incredibly generous, especially through the pandemic. They, they really have. And the Orton Gillingham has been amazing. We've gotten terrific feedback on that. Thank you. 
Uh, Duval, would you move the business items, please? Yes, um, I'll move B1 through B11, which would include two items on the addendum of B5, uh, sub set B and B11. May I have a second? I'll second. Second from Jocelyn, thank you. Uh, any comment on business items? Comments? All right, Barbara, would you call the roll? Mr. Bonnet? Aye. Ms. Boyle-Bellucci? Aye. Mr. Campbell? As to B1 through B9 and B11, I vote aye. As to B10, I abstain. Mrs. Got Ms. Gottlieb? Aye. Ms. Graham? Aye. Ms. San Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaros Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Uh, abstain from B1 and I to the rest. It looks like the, uh, the motion carries. We have arrived at the second public comment period for comments or questions on agenda items or other items pertaining to the running of the schools. Uh, the same rules apply. Uh, people in person should go to the lectern. Uh, people who are virtual can raise their hands. Uh, so let's start with the in-person people. one quick question um, with relationship to students um, going back to school in the fall in relationship to vaccinations, et cetera. Um, is there any consideration being made to students that have actually contracted COVID and have already, you know, will we count those in the data for, um, will we count those in the data of people that, you know, are vaccinated? How do we separate them? Um, so the individuals who had contact to the COVID, there's a 90 day period um, where they wouldn't have to be quarantined if, if an incident happened. Um, uh, uh, so as far as um, being uh, counted, it would be a temporary situation because it is a 90 day, day period. After that, then they'd fall into the uh, regular protocols as, as far as uh, quarantining if they were in close contact with the individual. I have one other question, if that's okay. Sure. The second question is related to the DEI program. I, you know, ancillarily, the, someone reported in the curriculum committee um, about the fact that that would be incorporated into related arts. Can we get more specifics as to what that actually means? When we're looking at DEI, we wanna make sure that we're offering a broad range of, um, um, exposures, whether it's artists or related arts, whether it's artists um, uh, from uh, different um, eras, whether it's uh, nationalities, um, locations, um, it's exposing them to different types of music, those sorts of things that we want to make sure that our students are, are getting a well-rounded well experience and not limiting their exposure. Okay. Will we know how that impacts the curriculum exactly? Uh, as There's well, going to be a change to the curriculum because I see that as being something that is done already. I'm just wondering what is the, going to be the net change to the curriculum? Yeah, that's something that would be presented then at the building, building level, level when it, when it occurs. Um, you, you should be hearing from the building principal or the classroom teacher. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next. Hi, my name's Tom. Um, just I have three questions. 
is there, um, in order to receive the American Rescue uh, Program funding, does that have to be in line with the COVID mitigations such as masking, social distancing, and uh, promoting vaccination? Is there, is there a correlation between the two? I, I don't believe so. It, is there a way to have it verified? Um, <laughs> is there a way to, excuse me? Verify that information. There's a considerable amount of information on the uh, Department of Education website. Um, I am not aware of any correlation between those two things, the masking and the- I, feel, I believe there is, but I, I did some research on it. This can be verified and this could be documented as well. Uh, we will follow up on it. Thank you. Uh, the second question is- Lee, 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 Lee. Uh, the second question is, I guess, is there any religious accommodations for students that have strong religious beliefs against the uh, COVID uh, mitigation, such as masking and forced vaccination? So it, my question is, can kids still go to school without these mitigations based on religious beliefs? Because of Title VII, the Civil Rights of 19, uh, 19, Civil Rights Act of 1964, <clears throat> religious accommodation needs to be made for <clears throat> students that have families that have sincerely held religious beliefs. And this is a, a federal law. <clears throat> uh, um, that might be a better question for our attorney, but from my understanding, um, when it comes to vaccinations, there's always religious exemptions. Uh, I do not recall within any of the governor's mandates of wearing the mask, if there was any religious exemptions it was more health related and age related. Um, maybe Athena could weigh in. Athena Cornell is our board attorney and she is with us virtually. I will um, repeat what she says. Athena. Uh, I, I, with respect to the vaccinations, yes, there are both medical and uh, religious accommodations. With respect to what's laid out, at least for purposes of the road back and the masking, um, the exceptions seem to be more specific to medical um, exceptions uh, and disabilities and sort of more of a safety type of scenario. So what, what she said was with respect to the vaccinations, there are the religious exemptions that, of the type that you spoke of uh, with regard to masking. It is more of a health and safety uh, consideration. At least what we have seen come out of uh, the governor's office, the Department of Health, et cetera. So we can, uh, we can delve further into that if you'd like. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, in the third? And, uh, I, you've uh, run out of your two minute time limit. Uh, okay. If you do have further questions, please feel free to send them to us by email and okay. we'll get back to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, people who are with us virtually, please use raise your hand function. Uh, friend, friend of all. You hear me now? Um, I have two things going here. Um, I can hear you. I just Brad. wanted to add to what was said earlier about the grants from the uh, the National Foundation. I uh, got the list of Tracy a, a little bit late after the meeting started, so I apologize. <laughs> but I just wanted to let everyone know that the emergent grant actually was a consolidation of grants to 44 teachers in the district representing all schools. And I think that uh, every teacher at Central School actually got at least one, if not more grants. We were fortunate to be able to fund everything anyone asked for. And it was very wide ranging from everything from sand to uh, robotic cameras to uh, track the teacher in the classroom for virtual learning. 
So we were very pleased to be able to provide these things and look forward to many more in, in the future, though not, not emergent, more uh, regular grants uh, when we're on the other side of all of this. Thanks. Thank you, Fran, and thank the foundation for your ongoing generosity. Uh, other hands, uh, Harris Strong. Yes, hi. I just have a question about the uh, in the grant uh, and just an example of the high school, middle school interventionist is 111,000. It seems like that's much higher than our current interventionists uh, pay grade that are in the buildings right now. Does that include uh, salary and benefits? Or are we looking for like uh, very high level people? Do we have a, a selection of people that you're looking at? Uh, with certain credentials to, you know, um, um, be of the the level of that kind of pay. Okay. Just okay. Uh, Mr. Tehran asked about specifics about the interventionist uh, appointment on the grant application. Sir, can you address that? Yes. Um, any full-time employee within the grant, it does include the salary and the uh, benefits, and that's why the cost is uh, seems high. It's it's the additional uh, expense related to benefits. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tron. I don't see any other hands in the raise your hand function. Uh, last chance for public comment for those not in attendance or in attendance rather virtually. I see Bernice. Hello, Bernice Short Bonnet, um, Glen Ridge resident. Um, I'm I'm very intrigued by this interventionist position, and and really appreciate the focus being put on reading and um, you know um, just advancement in this area. So just with the with the additional information about how the um, Horton Gillingham program is being continuing to be supported. Many thanks to the Educational Foundation there. Um, will this interventionist be sort of a consultant also just across all of the reading or LA needs? Um, or is it really just the teacher? I'm just trying to understand, is it, is it trying to address numerous um, opportunities to improve LA and LA scores, or is it just focused on sort of like a, a chosen set of students? We, we envision it at right now as really focusing on those students who, who needed the intervention last year, uh, perhaps, and, and weren't able to get it because of the hybrid model or uh, the students who might be struggling this year. Um, so we're looking to focus a little bit more on the individual students uh, um, if, uh, you know, I, I would consider our, our language arts department at the high school to be um, a, a veteran staff who's very knowledgeable and, and um, I'm sure that, that they would fit in well and, and perhaps if they have um, uh, expertise in the area that, that they would be working together and, and develop uh, perhaps some of, um, professional opportunities with, within the language arts department. But uh, the, the focus we're seeing it is working with students and not working with the teachers necessarily. Thanks, Bernice. And for those who could not hear, that was a question relative to more details about the interventionist position. Uh, anyone else? Okay, that being the case, at this time, the board has finished with its official business for this evening.